Today we're going to be talking about the first five Saturdays, this particular devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And joining me is Dr. Christine Bacon. And she and I wanted to share this beautiful devotion to Our Lady um, that I feel so many more Catholics need to take advantage of. Don't you agree, Christine? I think everybody, including Protestants, need to, but we are so messed up out there that sometimes they unknowingly are the reasons that we have to do this um, because we're praying for some of the blasphemies that they're uttering against Our Lady. Oh, but yeah, every Catholic needs to do this. And I get so protective over Our Lady. I always say I'm the Blessed Mother's bulldog. I get you are. extremely protective over her. And so the, the first five Saturdays devotion, Christine, is a request made by Our Lady of Fatima. And the Blessed Mother promised to assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation, all of who is an act of reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on the first five Saturdays of consecutive months. So it's just, so if uh, if you would start this in March, we're recording this in February, March, April, May, June, July, the first Saturdays of each of those months, again, it needs to be consecutive. And for these first Saturdays, you need to go to confession, receive Holy Communion, say five decades of the rosary and in addition to the five decades of the rosary keep mary company for 15 minutes meditating on the 15 mysteries of the rosary and christine i i want you to share um the the five wounds the reasons why we're doing five yes you know doing five when I read this, Regan, it really, you know, kind of ripped me up because I've heard this recently. I hear this almost daily, one of these blasphemies. And so when this, when Our Lady asked for these communions and reparation of the five first Saturdays, she said, um, it's explaining these kinds of offenses and blasphemies against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So there are five. So each first Saturday makes up for one of the five. And these are things, tell me if you've seen these things in your daily uh, walk these days. Number one, blasphemies against her immaculate conception. So many people are saying she wasn't conceived immaculately. She was born with sin. <gasps> it's a blasphemy. Number two, blasphemies against her perpetual virginity. I have heard this for decades. Who cares if she had sex with Joseph years later uh, after she... No, she didn't. That's a blasphemy. Number three against her divine and spiritual maternity of Mary. So many Protestants I have heard say, Mary is the mother of Jesus, but not the mother of God, which first of all makes no sense whatsoever. Jesus is God. He was in her womb. She is the mother of God. But that's blasphemy to say she was only mother to his physical half. It's like saying you only birthed your children's uh, arms, but not their legs. It's crazy. Um, and the last one is, blasphemies involving rejection and dishonoring of her images. Actually, that's four. Behind me, I have images of Our Lady of Fatima there, St. Joseph, and then the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I have had people comment on my podcast going, how oh, dare you, you're going to hell for those images. And I'm like, that's a blasphemy because that is honoring our mother. And the last one is the neglect. This one, I think, can almost be the worst sometimes. The neglect of implanting in the hearts of children a knowledge and love of his Immaculate Mother. I've read it before where it says where they actually plant in children's hearts this disdain for our mother. I've seen on Amazon lately um, toilet covers with our mother or Jesus' face on it. So it's an intentional sit on this here. We've seen horrible t-shirts and things with um, using Jesus and prostitutes or our mother with with um, jokes that when she's pregnant, she's got other dudes lined up on the side. And just these are all blasphemies, even if they're supposed to be just funny, they are not. And when a child sees that and he or she thinks 
it's funny, and they lose respect for the fact that she is the mother of God, there will be literally hell to pay for that. And so we have got to do these five first Saturdays just to make up, to repair the damage because Jesus' heart is ripped open when he watches people do that to his mom, his mom, his mother, the woman he loves most. And I think, you know, Christine, um, these despicable things that Satanists, that uh, agnostics do to Our Lady are are unfathomable and they're just yeah. But something that seems to almost rub me the wrong way even more and, and where I am so protective of her is our, our fellow Christian brothers and sisters um, who are not Catholic, who are so dismissive of her and I always ask yeah. them, do you think God, almighty God the Father, would be so flippant in choosing any any random woman, oh, she'll do, to, to be the mother of his most precious son, to be the mother of the Savior of the world? And I think you are... You, that's almost dis- it well it's not almost it is disgraceful to God um, that's a slap to his face to think that he would just be so flippant in his decision and whom he chose the only woman in the entire universe to bear his son right and, and so- before he even lowered himself from heaven into a mere mortal body he had already written the Ten Commandments one of which is honor thy father and my mother, and he, being God and also being man, would never break one of his own commandments because then that would make him a sinner. So Jesus honors his mother. And if we, here's the thing, if Jesus is our brother and Mary's his mother, Mary's our mother, you honor her. And, and I always say, I promise you, you can never love Mary too much. You can never outlove her more than Jesus loves her. Nope. We just can't. And and I love that my children have this this beautiful love for Mary. And when they ever, whenever they see, her, of course, before the crucifix, before Jesus, they bow to him, they kiss his feet, they love our Lord. But they have such a beautiful love for our, our mother too. And Christine, the one thing I want to say is. For anyone, you know, and of course you can see St. Joseph, our, our Blessed Mother, Sacred Heart of Jesus behind me as well, and St. Michael. Um, but when people say, oh, you have a you have a photo of Mary in your home? I, I, I just want to say, do you have any photos of your mother in your home? Exactly. Is that, is that, sacri- is, is that wrong to do? Is that wrong to, to love your mother, to have photos of her? Um, and so... It, again, it's just we. I we wish that all of our brothers and sisters, and even those, even our non-believers, everybody knew right. the love of their heavenly mother, um, who just simply she's so humble, so lowly. She just wants to bring people to her son. She is the intercessor. Yeah. That is all she wants. And the one thing I want to say before we close giving our Blessed Mother credit, I try to sneak this in anywhere I can. I've always had a close relationship with Our Lady since I was little. Oftentimes, I would go to her sometimes more frequently. And I think it was just this mother-daughterly connection, the, the, the female connection. And I did a consecration to Mary um, a couple years ago. And I really enjoyed doing it, but I didn't feel different while doing it. And, you know, so I I got to the last day and, you know, I wasn't, I'm like, huh, I really don't feel different. And it's not like I was expecting an apparition or a locution. (laughs) I would. And I finished, literally, Christine, I get chills. I finished the last words of the last day. And over my entire body the outcome of my consecration to Mary, I immediately felt closer to Jesus. I, I I tell everybody this, and I had no idea what was coming. I had no idea what to expect. But as I s- said the closing prayer, it was this immediate feeling. It was almost like she lovingly carried you and moved me closer to Jesus. I can't even explain it. I, I only felt it. 
And from that point forward, I, I, I went to Jesus so much more, always went to him first. And I, I get teary eyed because that is all she wants. And so I thought I consecrated my heart to our blessed mother and she shifted me closer to her son. Yeah. Can I add a quick story? What's that? I just, can I add a quick story? I went to a funeral this week, and the woman who died had um, prayed the rosary religiously at least one time a day, definitely beginning in her youth, but, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s. And in her um, eulogy, so she had four daughters. One of her daughters said, I did the math, Mom, and in all the years, you've done over 2 million Hail Marys. You've called out to our mom over 2 million times. And then that says, please be with us at the hour of our death. And another sister, because there are four sisters, was in another state far away. And just before her mom died, it was the day before she died. And they knew it was happening. And this daughter was on her knees saying, Mother Mary, go be with my mother. She said, at one point, she was going into the, the depths of sorrow because she was feeling grief and tension. But all of a sudden she said there was this like, and she felt like heaven opened up and sent Mary down and came through her and was sitting at her mother's bedside. She said, I cannot explain it to everyone, but that was on Saturday. Heaven opened. My, our mother came, sat at the bedside of my mom while she was dying. And so when she did die, the persons there said that she had said something to the effect of seeing her mom. And so you think about this, calling out to your mom all these times, be with us now and at the hour of our death. Could you imagine what it'd be like to have her there saying, I'm going to walk with you. You're about to be judged, but I'm right here. So comforting. So beautiful. Yeah. Again, one of the most beautiful quick prayers and i know every day we're all busy we all have the home bustle we all have things to do places to go we're running and but even just stopping for a moment jesus i trust in you mother mary be a mother to pray me. for us mother yeah mother mary pray for us mother mary pray for me right now this day but especially at the hour of my death and let me tell you those times Tiny prayers are so impactful when we say them meaningfully, when we believe in the meaning behind those prayers. And so um, I just think of the, the beauty just in, in how much, Christine, every female, every woman, how we're called to emulate our Blessed Mother, how we can, how we should be striving to be more like Mary. And so um, I ask all of you, share this with your family, with your friends. Please mark your calendars. The first Saturday of each month, get to Mass in addition to your Sunday Mass. So if you were going to go, if you're doing this Saturday morning or a Saturday evening Mass in honor for Mary, you would still need to go on Sunday for your normal Sunday obligatory Mass. Um, sit with her for 15 minutes. Say, say five decades of the Rosary. Sit 15 minutes quietly with her thinking of everything she went through, thinking of our Lord's passion, especially right now during Lent, what we're preparing for. Yes. Um, our Lord's death, our, his, his resurrection, following Easter Divine Mercy Sunday. There's so much coming up in the church. And I think, I think too often, Christine, we get so excited for Christmas, right? I, I mean, we do. It, it's, it's everyone's favorite time of the year. Right. The birth of Christ. But I think, my gosh, if we had that yearning in our hearts for, for his, Easter, for his resurrection, so we can spend eternity, like if we truly just begin to try to fathom what all of that means, and just taking moments out of our day to focus on that, but truly taking a short amount of time, 30 minutes aside for a mass, an extra 30 minutes for a rosary and, and 15 minutes spending with Our Lady on the first Saturday of each month for five consecutive months yeah. to think of having Our Lady there by your side at the hour of, of your death, helping you with those graces that you need to be able to, to kneel before our Lord. Yeah. Let it console Jesus and let it bless you.